Now, this has been, again, a very close race as expected. No clear front runner just yet as the night is young. Let's bring in Lauren Cristella, president of the Committee of 70. We do appreciate you joining us tonight and bringing us your perspective on this race for Philadelphia mayor. Now the most expensive in the city's history. Tell me your thoughts about that. We saw a lot of outside uh, spending from dark money packs, uh, a lot of millionaires spending their own money to fuel their campaigns. And it, um, it is obviously, you know, driving up the cost of running here. Uh, Maria Canuna Sanchez, when she bowed out of the race, mentioned that, you know, the, the bar barrier to entry with these big spending, uh, the big spending that we were seeing across the campaign was really limiting to people who don't, who can't sell finance or don't have the access to those packs. Yeah, and we know that Alan Dom is one of those top contenders there, and we know that he has also spent the most money, at least on advertising and on media. Tell me, do you think that really resonates with voters? Is that what it's going to take to kind of get the name out there, uh, his position, and will that make a difference in the end, do you think? I mean, I think it certainly makes a difference. I don't know if it's the whole ball game, but name recognition, getting your message out, um, even, you know, negative messages about other candidates does have an impact. Um, so it certainly will be a factor, but I don't think it's going to be the only deciding factor here. Yeah, and we were talking about voter turnout today. Certainly the weather was not a factor today. It was yes. a beautiful day. That's a good thing. Uh, but we're still hearing certain pockets of the city had low voter turnout. One of my uh, friends is a ward leader in the Roxborough area. I think it's the 21st ward. Uh, and usually there's high voter turnout there, she's telling me. But today, not so much. They didn't see that at all. So it seemed a bit concerning to folks out there. Um, what do you think just about voter turnout and how that could make a difference? I think what we need to do in these big elections, when you see, you know, national groups flood in in even numbered years, the presidential races, the midterms, uh, we need to do the work of engaging voters in between and teaching them how to access their elected officials and hold them accountable so that they actually see change and see a reason to vote instead of breeding voter apathy from election cycle to election cycle. Um, I also think we had a high number of undecided voters, and some of these we, we assumed would turn into actual voters uh, and head to the polls, make their choice, but some may have chosen to stay at home and say, you know, I can't, I'd be fine with any of the top three or I'd be fine with top two. Uh, and not cast their vote. Yeah, I was just out and about in the city earlier uh, this morning and just hearing people in different shops I was in, different places I went, just talking about, well, we're not still sure. We think maybe this person, we're hearing that person might be good. And they hadn't gotten to the polls yet, but you could still hear how undecided people still were. Um, does that surprise you that there's, there were so, so many undecided voters out there, even with all the advertising we're seeing from these candidates and just the name recognition from different uh, endorsements? that they've gotten as well. Yes, it was surprising. I mean, typically things tighten up in the in the last few weeks of the race, and we just did not see that this year. Uh, it, it has been a neck and neck and neck and neck race uh, for the last several weeks. And I think that's more a testament to the quality of the candidates, that people would be fine with a few different ones, that there wasn't um, a strong binary between two two candidates uh, so that you're seeing that they were holding on to the to their undecided vote for much longer than than you would have typically seen. Yeah, and when you think also just about, you know, what you would think would be driving folks to the polls, I mean, the number one issue that we keep hearing over and over again is crime, gun violence, uh, public safety. Uh, that, that certainly is still very much a concern for Philadelphians right now, just in light of, uh, you know, the gun violence that we're seeing and the historic level of that. What do you think? Is that going to be something that you think in the end, when we look at some of the exit polls or when we see who's actually come out and why they wanted to vote, that that might be a big, big factor? I think it's a factor across the board, but I also think that every candidate has offered up uh, their approach to solving this problem and what they would do within their first 100 days. So I don't know that they've really been able to differentiate themselves too much on the issue of crime, though all of them are placing it as their top priority going into to the election day. Yeah, and do you think that endorsements do matter? We've been talking about that as well. I mean, think about Helen Gim. She had some pretty heavy hitters in over the weekend. Bernie Sanders, uh, Ocasio-Cortez uh, being a, you know, a progressive uh, supporter as well. Uh, folks like that. And then Reinhardt, of course, being endorsed by three former mayors, uh, Street, uh, Rendell, and Nutter. I mean, does that, is that going to make a difference, you think? I think endorsements matter, but I don't know that those types of endorsements necessarily matter. The ones that come with 
people knocking doors, boots on the ground, uh, and turnout operations are the, the endorsements that really matter. So think about the union endorsements that both Helen Gim and Sherelle Parker received. Uh, those translate the ward endorsements, right? That when you end up on a sample ballot that's handed out at the polling place that really drive voters, especially when there's undecided voters, they might follow the lead of their ward leader. Uh, so, so in terms of endorsements, I would say that those probably matter more than uh, celebrity or national figure or previous mayors might, might count. Another thing that we, we've been talking about as well, just in terms of the primary here in Pennsylvania overall, uh, just the fact that we're one of only nine states that still has like a closed primary, only registered Democrats or Republicans can vote in this primary at this point. Uh, but we understand there may be like 1.2 million or so Pennsylvanians who are independents who aren't allowed to vote at this juncture. Uh, would that make a difference if that were something that the state legislature changed or if there was something that would allow those voters to now take a part of this process? Absolutely. Uh, so many of the calls we received at the Committee of 70 today were from voters who didn't realize they had to change their registration. Um, sometimes when you update your driver's license, you don't realize that it switched you back to independent uh, when you're updating your voter registration at the motor voter. Uh, system. So people got to the polls and then weren't able to vote on candidates, could only vote on uh, ballot questions. And for so many people, certainly young people, veterans are disproportionately independent voters. Uh, they don't have a say in these elections unless they remember to switch and want to switch their party affiliation by the voter registration deadline, which was two weeks ago. So by the time most people are thinking about the election, it's too late and they're shut out of the system that they are paying for, right? Their tax dollars also support these elections and they're not allowed to vote on the candidates. And what would you advise folks to do just to make sure that they know of their party affiliation, that they make sure that they know what they're registered as just going into any further election now in the future? Yeah, the first thing I would do is, is go to the Department of State's website and uh, votespa.com and you can check your voter registration there. You can update it from now. You can uh, choose to wait until the, the next election and remain an independent. And then it would also go to ballotpa.org and sign the petition to end closed primaries in Pennsylvania. <laughs> All right, great. We do appreciate that. Thank you so much, Lauren. We appreciate your time tonight. We'll get back with you throughout the evening.